Hey guys, Sethamedi3 here coming at you with another video and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to get all the copper that you'll need in Fallout 4. Now I decided to make this video because a lot of people have been complaining that the copper in Fallout 4 is quite rare. Well I beg a differ and I'll show you guys exactly what I mean in a bit. While there is a variety of videos out there showing you how to do this, I personally feel that the methods shown in those videos aren't as good as they could be. Which is why I decided to make this video for you guys to show you how I get my copper and how easy it is to come by despite what people think. And it's all a matter of knowing where to look for it. Before we get into the copper making method that I'm going to show you, I am going to open up the perk chart to share with you guys a perk that I think will be very beneficial for everybody out there that enjoys building in Fallout 4. The perk that I recommend you guys to get is called Strong Back. Now this perk allows you to use your action points to move when you're overwhelmed but also when you max it out this perk will allow you to fast travel between locations while overwhelmed. So with this perk I am able to loot everything during my missions and then fast travel to the locations where I will then sell them. And as a bonus feature for this video, I will also show you guys how to have a working teleporter after you've reached the institute. While the teleporter becomes non-functional after completing the mission institutionalized, I think it is a very nice decorational piece for any settlement. But more about this later. Now let's get cracking with getting that copper. We are going to start off by traveling to the Drumlin Diner. And for those who haven't discovered it yet, I will also show you its location on the map. The majority of the videos that I've seen on YouTube tell you to buy anything that contains copper from Trudy then wait 48 hours before purchasing again. I personally think that this method isn't as efficient as what I'm going to show you as Trudy doesn't have that many items which contain copper. However, the method that I'm going to show you does involve purchasing items that contain copper. So for that reason, Trudy is one of our go-to merchants. Whenever coming to the diner to yeah. purchase items from Trudy, it's always worth Carla. keeping an eye out for that Carla, again. who is another traveling merchant business? who will often sell items look. that sure. contain yeah. copper. With this occasion, I'm also going to show you guys why I think it's a waste of time to just wait here for 48 hours until Trudy's stockpile refreshes. So let's see how many items that contain copper I can get from Carla, after which we will compare it to the amount of items and copper gained from Trudy. So one thing I forgot to mention is that at the beginning of this video I only had 35 copper. The reason I mentioned this is that when we finish visiting all the merchants that I'm going to show you, you will see that we have gained quite a significant amount of copper. And the other thing that you will notice is that you will be gaining a lot more copper from the merchants that I'll be showing you than you will from Trudy. Which is why I don't agree with waiting here for 48 hours until her stock refreshes. Right, so it looks like we've got all the copper that we could from here, so let's do the math. I purchased 6 items from which I will be getting a total of 10 copper by scrapping it. Now that we have finished with Carla, let's go and see what Trudy has to offer us. Of course, after I loot the dead raiders. After all, we mustn't let all that good stuff go to waste with it being the apocalypse and everything. Now that we have finished with Carla, let's go and see what the good old Trudy has to offer us. <laughs> I can rest My apologies for the laggy lot. portion yeah. of gameplay Thank here. My Elgato game capture card decided to play I'm funny sorry. games with me. Anyway, let's continue with our shopping and see how much Trudy has to offer us in terms of copper. Or items that we can extract copper from through scrapping it. So far she has two hot plates that contain one copper each and one telephone and one vacuum tube both containing one copper. So let's crunch the numbers. From Carla I bought six items that contained a total of ten copper and from Trudy I bought four items containing four copper. Now that we have finished here, it's time to head out to the next location and the next place we'll be going to will be Good Neighbor. Again, I'll also show you its location on the map if you don't know where it is. Now that we've arrived in Good Neighbor, let's make our way to Daisy's Discount where we'll go and talk to Daisy who is another merchant Stay and who sister. also sells a lot of good China. useful junk, Chances whom I here. wish would talk I less and looking. trade more. As you'll see, Daisy is another merchant who has a lot of junk, browse. some of which will contain copper. Once she stops thousand. talking, of course. Hello. 
And in my rush to get to the junk tab, I skipped over it. Well done, Sethem. I blame Daisy for that and that noise that she makes which she calls talking. Although Daisy does not have a lot of items that contain copper in them, it will add up with what we've already purchased from the previous merchants. Along with what we are going to get from the other merchants which I will show you once we're finished here. So from Daisy we bought a total of 3 items that contained 3 copper. Which means that up until now we bought a total of 13 items and we can extract a total of 17 copper out of them. If fast traveling isn't the method that you prefer to get your copper and you prefer to wait 48 hours, then the next place that I'll be showing you guys is the best place to use that 48 hour method. The surplus shop in Diamond City is the best place to use that method because it has two vendors, one that sells during the day and the other that sells during the night as I will show you guys in a few moments which seem to have a different stock. As it's now night time, the vendor that I will be trading with is Percy, which is the robotic vendor, which trades during the night. Which, as you will see in a bit, tends to have quite a lot of junk that contains copper. Now, I am deliberately going to be doing this slowly so you guys can see what items I am buying and what amount of copper I can extract from it. And once I've finished buying all the stuff that I can from Percy, I will tell you guys how many items I've bought and what amount of copper I can extract. When I finish buying all the stuff that I need from Percy, I will then wait at the diner until daytime, after which I will return back to the shop and purchase all the stuff that I need from the other merchant who sells during the day. Because this shop has two merchants that sell at different times of the day which seem to have a separate stock, I personally think that this is the best place to use that 48 hour wait method if you don't want to use the fast travel as you'll get more items from it that contain copper than you would with Trudy. So from Percy I have bought a total of 8 items which contained a total of 10 copper. Not bad at all. So now that I have finished with Percy, I am going to go and sit on the stool at the counter and wait until about 8am in the morning when the next merchant should appear. So now Percy should have been replaced by the next merchant who I believe is called Myrna or something like that. So let's make our way there and see what goodies she has for us today. Yeah. And well, if we also I add what we, we got this. from Percy, you will see that we I've will have got a, a lot of products that contained a lot of copper by comparison to what you would have got from Trudy. Which is why I think this is the best place to use that 48 hour waiting method if you really feel like it. Again, I am going to be going through the items that she has for sale slowly so that you guys can see what items she has and what amount of copper we can get out of it. So we can do a nice mathematical calculation at the end of it. As you can see, we've already got a few items that contain a nice amount of copper and we're only halfway through the list of items that she sells. Now that we've bought everything that contained copper from this vendor, let's do a quick recap. So from Percy we bought a total of 8 items that contained a total of 10 copper. And from Myrna we bought a total of 7 items that contained a total of 9 copper. From these 2 vendors or merchants in Diamond City we've managed to purchase a total of 15 items from which we can extract a total of 19 copper. And from all of the merchants so far we managed to get a total of 36 copper. And finally the last merchants that I will show you guys are the ones that you can set up in your own settlement. In order to get the best results from these merchants I recommend that you set up general stores. As food stores will sell food and drinks and weapon stores will sell ammunition and weapons. By the time I will have finished buying all the stuff that I want from this merchant, I will have gained somewhere around 40 copper, which isn't all that bad considering that a lot of people are struggling with it. While copper is indeed a rare item in terms of lootable items around the world in Fallout 4, it is certainly not that rare when it comes to buying it from merchants. Now, bear in mind that I've only shown you a couple of merchants that are available in the Fallout game, and if you have more settlement and open up more shops, you will be able to get more items that contain copper. 
the iron back part that I showed you at the beginning of this video does come in handy if you're going to use this method because you can loot everything in the world and sell it to the merchant so this way you will reduce the amount of money that you spend or completely mitigate it or even make a profit as you'll be carrying a lot more items than the maximum capacity hey, of your character and you'll be able up? to get from one it's point to the other by using the fast travel system as Let's promised at the have. beginning of yeah, this video, we'll I will also be showing you guys how to get a working teleporter. Well, working in the sense of having the blue glowing light and moving parts. As after you have been to the institute, oh, that teleporter is pretty much just for show and won't really teleport you anywhere. But you will be able to use it as a hair stimulation system to prevent hair loss as a result of radiation in the world. I've also heard that it's a great device for stimulating hair growth. Anyways, going back to the more serious side of things, once you've completed institutionalization, which is the quest that takes you to the institute, the teleporter that you've used will pretty much be destroyed and won't be usable. So to have a working teleporter, what I did is I built one in Sanctuary, which is my main settlement. Well, my only settlement for that reason, after which I then built a secondary teleporter in a different location. Now here's how it works. When you've completed building your first teleporter, the faction that you've chosen to help you will arrive at the location of the teleporter, which then means you can begin the mission and go to the institute. If you've used the teleporter to go to the institute, then that was a one-way ticket as the teleporter will be destroyed and you can't repair it again. Or at least I couldn't. Anyways, after building the first teleporter, then you should select a secondary location or settlement where to build that second teleporter, which you will use to get to the institute. After you've completed the second teleporter, the faction that is aiding you to get to the institute will then follow you there. In my case, I decided to build that secondary teleporter at Boston Airport. And I'm going to quickly fast travel there to show you guys what it looks like after you've completed the institutionalized mission. And here we are. So we've arrived at Boston Airport. This is what the teleporter will end up looking after you've used it. I don't know if it's possible to repair it or restore it. However, I've tried and not been successful with it. So it looks to me like this is an item or an object designed to be used once. And after that, you're going to end up pretty much scrapping it. Or you could keep the ruins if you want to do that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you found the information and tips in this video useful. Don't forget to press that like button and subscribe for more. And why not leave a comment with your thoughts and ideas. And if you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Also, if you found this video more helpful than what is currently out there, help me spread the word about it. And let's help everybody that is struggling with copper in Fallout 4. Until next time, this is Seth 83 wishing you guys all the best.